Game number one, ladies and gentlemen. We are jumping straight into the one versus SBT. Rank three against rank four in our group stage, the final group stage of the Gold League tournament. And again, just as a quick explanation, this is a double round robin group stage format that they are playing. So all of the teams play 14 matches. They play everybody else twice and every map matters. This is actually a best of two, no best of three. Yes, you heard right. It's a best of two, meaning that every single map matters for the rankings. Also, we have a bit of a change today. I mean, look at those outfits. Normally we're seeing them in suits, the women in costumes that are quite interesting to say the least. I mean, it always feels like we're going on a little bit of a time travel whenever that happens. But today we have t-shirts, so we have more of a casual look. They actually uh, earlier were talking about, or also like gesticulating quite a little bit on where each emoticon is. But I have to admit that at least for a little bit, I like that better. Nova, on the other hand, I mean, I gotta say that his t-shirt size is a little bit off. Now, he stood up earlier to just show that the t-shirt ends right here. So basically at his pants. So I gotta say that the design of the t-shirt is, in my personal opinion, not really well done. I mean, the cut is a little bit off. It has the right length, but it's a little bit too baggy for him. And that's a bit of a problem. Um, as a woman, you have a couple of tweaks that you can apply there to deal with that issue. But in his case, it's definitely not very flattering. So he complained about this a little bit earlier on the stream. But we're going to see how the outfits are going to look for tomorrow and next week. But for today, we're just going to accept that. But we're also going to accept that once again, we are not going to get any access to Zeratul, Anna and Jaina. And guess who else was banned out? The cow gets banned out too. I highlighted in previous videos how ETC actually is highly contested in China right now, especially when SPT is playing. Nisaka definitely wants that hero whenever he can get it. We're starting things off with Towers of Doom here and currently with the Sylvanas and Dehaka right off the bat. Now my personal question with this is still if we are going to see maybe another global on SPT side. We have seen a bit of false side play, but since they already committed to a Turanda, there's obviously always the chance that they're more so thinking about going for a burst damage setup, and a Nuborak actually underlines that thought process. You get the engage there, you move in with Turanda, quick stun, Hunter's Mark, but then you need the burst damage behind it, and Jaina's banned out. So you need from that perspective and to think, okay, who else would fit the bill? Malthale in five versus five fights can actually help out with the last rights there too. Keep in mind, we have actually seen on the Chinese scene a couple of tormented souls in the, the recent past. So there's always the option for that. But I personally would say that last rights fits better with what that composition so far is apparently intended to do. But definitely the matchup between Dehaka and Malthel is going to be interesting. Malthel is going to have a good time there if he plays his cards right. Now the Sylvanas pressure is obviously more so designed to get control of the map and really roll that momentum. Another one has been playing a strong tournament and they are running some of the Korean players here. SPT is playing with basically a full Chinese setup. And in terms of bands, we're now having not only Garrosh removed, but also um, a Jimmy has been taken out here. Yeah, and as we're heading into our ne next few picks, we have actually Malfurion taken. It was always a little bit wonky to see the support meta on the uh, Chinese side, but Malfurion is a pretty standard move even when you look at this from a European perspective. On top of that, we get the rat, so Junkrat is in for even more poke damage, more damage also against all the minion waves that can come out and even more. And yeah, that's Tracer. And Phoenix, all right. Not really looking at a lot of the mages here, but instead Tracer and Phoenix. So we're going to see some Pulse Bomb action. And honestly, they can definitely try and hunt down that Junkrat, Malfurion, and, and more so even Sylvanas. And Dibbles as the last pick in game number one. Game number one, Towers of Doom. And we are heading right into it with the one with the Korean players here, starting on the left side in blue and over to the right. We have SPT Misaka on a Nuburak today. No ETC for him this time, but let's see who's going to take game number one here. As we're heading into the first game, once again, the quick disclaimer. This is a Chinese clean feed that we get provided from the production team, which means that I have absolutely zero control over the Observer UI that is being used. 
I have no control over the observing itself and I unfortunately cannot show you stacking progress as for example the unfurling shadows on Sylvana so we are absolutely reliant on the Chinese observers there. Also you might experience a couple of low FPS situations with this feed and that is pretty much just because our baseline feed that we get from the Chinese is running on a lower quality than I normally use for my own videos. If you watched some of Gold League already then you definitely know all that but if you are new to the party then that's the explanation of why this is definitely a little bit more laggy but then again we get a glimpse into the Chinese meta and that's worth the sacrifice especially since we're now getting closer and closer to the final bracket. There's only a couple of matches left until we are finally going to determine a champion for this one. With this said, we're having at the time being still rotations here with a bit of a three man at the bot lane. It's actually more of a 1-1 one -one situation that we have on the side of the one with mid and top lane respectively. But the rotation of Tracer down to the bottom. That's kinda what we here what we are expecting here. Uh, already trying to get a little bit of action going against Hey Hey, and that's the kill. Nicely done. Phoenix goes in, and with the help of Tracer, they're getting the first kill here. Well played. And honestly, this highlights the aggression that we've been talking about during the draft. If you have that Anubarak and Tyrande setup, then this is definitely one of the intents that you have with that comp and obviously I would still expect to see them go into Malthale's last rights here but I once more I have to highlight that there are definitely differences in talent choices as well between the regions and especially China loves to go into uh, yeah, just deviate away from the last rights and goes into the torment of souls occasionally another good kill here and they're looking for another one Magi already getting body blocked by Melody C as he's moving out but the kill came in against Sylvanas just a few seconds earlier and they were able to get another camp as their rewards. So SBT is killing it in the early game. They are doing extremely well here. Now we have to keep in mind that the one is running quite a few Koreans that have so far shown a fantastic tournament. But this early game definitely belongs to their opponent as SBT is just crushing it. Phoenix might have to rotate back up. Oh, no. Good actually doesn't even do anything here. So sitting tight and saying like, all right. Don't have any vision, I don't know where Phoenix is, let's not fall for this and just allow him to take the camp here. But you can just simply look at the experience lead to understand very quickly that SPT is off to a good start. And in addition to that, we are also obviously having them now with a structural advantage thanks to the towers that they took down at the bot lane. So they have an easier time to try and push that through. But, once more, a lot of these games are obviously decided more so around level 10s and afterwards than uh, beforehand. It depends on how much of a lead you get. But those heroic abilities are definitely a big game changer that oftentimes makes all the difference here. Nice attempt to go for Hugo, but Misaka actually misses out on the stun. Hugo able to jump onto the wave and move out. And again, the channels here. So we have so far only one channel through. Well, there's the second and traditionally the fight over the third. So uh, who's going to get that little lead here? Max Fire, the American in the team doing his thing here on Phoenix, still getting those auto attacks in, and well, little circle of death that we're seeing from him here too, putting Diablo again into trouble. Here comes the approach from Hey Hey onto Tyrande. Tyrande might actually fall as we're seeing them go in. Good wants to get the kill and he gets it. Down go Tyrande and Tracer. Dibbles dies as well. Can they get Magi? The aggressive war by Maxfire and Phoenix gets the last shot in against the support of the one. The fight not over by any means though. Once again, good trying to get the drag in. Has not connected and that's the end of the Haka right there. Two for three trade in favor of SPT at this point. And they have a very, very good shot of now also getting the altar channel through. Fantastic start into the game for them. The one definitely showing some teeth at this point. Showcasing that they are definitely able to get those kills in too. But, as I said before, shots are fired and the core is now down to 32 points for the one. And we're off to a good start. I mean, we are only four and a half minutes in. We have seven kills already. A lot of back and forth between the two teams. We're now seeing the subterranean shield coming out from Anubarak, who went into the regeneration master on level one. So very interested to have the beefy version of Anubarak come through once he completes his quest. It's going to be super important for him to get those extra 500 HP. And in the meantime, we're also seeing the Celestial Attunement again for Toranda. Obviously important here, especially against those engagers from heroes like Diablo. Uh, wave already being pushed through. 
Hugo Silvanas is going to be critical in this game. Let's just face that. So he's obviously going to try and stack his level 1 as much as he can. I hope that the Observer is going to showcase that later on a little bit more so that we get an idea of how many stacks he has. I can tell you one thing that Hey Hey is struggling with his stacks because he's getting nearly completely destroyed in these little fights. But in this one, he survives and they turn around again. Phoenix get the kill. And now Franklin is attempting to follow it up with a second kill against a big bro of S. And Malthale might actually fall. Melodicy comes in. And the last grenade literally takes him down. Misaka himself in an attempt to save his ally dies too. And all of a sudden the one is starting to turn the game around here. Nicely played by them. Struggling significantly in the early game. And all of a sudden with a few kills that they got here. They gain the momentum that they need and are already attacking the bottom right bell tower. They've taken a significant lead in experience thanks to these kills. And we'll hit the earlier level 10. And they already get the map control. Very nice comeback from the one here in the game. I mean, again, super early obviously. We're not talking about an insane late game comeback just yet. But considering the little beating that they got here at the beginning of the game, that's definitely a respectable effort that we're seeing from them right now. And they're also taking the lead on the objective as we now see 32 against 31 points on the core. That's definitely helping them a lot with this. So at this point, how are they going to play it? SPT that is. They need level 10, that's obvious. They need level 10 before that's the case. They can't fight this. But their mission has to be to reclaim the bottom bell tower and attempt to get something done here. But they're actually going for a bit of a different approach. They actually start moving to the top left in an attempt to get the kill against, I would assume, the Haka. But maybe even push in the wall and go for a trade in structures. But it's not really working out for them. So after that little failed attempt, they're already starting to move away. It's still a five bell tower versus three bell tower scenario. And now at the mid lane, I mean, they're still lingering around here. It seems a little bit like they don't quite know where do we want to go, how do we want to approach this. The Haka plays it extremely safe as long as he doesn't have vision of all five heroes on the enemy team. And that's exactly what he needs to do here. We're seeing camps taken from both teams in the meantime, but that control over the bottom right bell tower is still in the hands of the one. So that is going to be a thorn in the side of SPT that they will have to deal with eventually. And there's obviously also now camps starting to move in slowly but steadily. The pumpkin camps definitely going to be an issue. 20 seconds until we're having the two altars up on the map. And keep in mind, you grab both, you take 10 shots off. Or 10 points of the opponent's core. There's a cocoon already being used. Okay, they're trying to force the fight right now. Already the poke happening. The Haka hasn't really made the move yet. The Haka is actually going for the opponent's altar. The Arka is just going for the altar here. They're saying like, hey, if you want to brawl, that's absolutely fine with me. I'm going to get both of them. And SPT is already retreating, sending Malthael topside and defending with the rest of the bot lane against all those little pumpkins. And let's see if a few of them go actually down. What you could see here is again a move that is uh, quite common these days. The attempt of Diablo to stand on top of the pumpkin mercenaries so that they can't be targeted by direct attacks like, and, I mean, for example, you could use Ch Thrall's Chain Lightning or anything like this. So any any point and click is very difficult to hit if you have a hero standing on top of these. And that's exactly what uh, Hei Hei was trying to do with Diablo here. To make sure that at least a few of them have a chance of getting through. Then it didn't quite end up that way. But we're still having that lead with 29 points against 26 on the core right now. So SPT is falling slightly behind here. After we saw the exchange in Bell Towers. Thanks to the discrepancy that we have. And now, obviously, also a little bit of top lane value as Malthale is winning the lane quite handily against the Haka here and is starting to put the pressure onto those bell towers too. I mean, as good as it is to get the top bell tower if it eventually happens for SBT, the problem is the bot lane is more important because the pumpkin camps are there and will threaten the core directly after a while. So this is one of the big problems in that setup. So, at the same time now, again, the move by Misaka all the way up to uh, the mid lane here. Uh, Big Bro is already sitting there trying to make the rotation top lane in time for him to catch the experience. It's not going to be an issue for them. But at the same time, we're also having the level 13 abilities for the one a little bit earlier. And we're not just now getting them for SBT. But it's a single altar this time on the map. And that should be our next big fight here. 
Because for the last four minutes, it was pretty much just a non-aggression pack for both sides. It was a little bit of poke and prod, but no real commitments from either side. Now it's a different story. The Haka still obviously with the option to push out a wave before he makes a commitment there. A uh, good attempt with the roots on the ground, but hey, doesn't get the move in. And they actually give this one up. A little bit surprising to me, to be honest. They just let the channel through, and now Magi is also in the back here having some trouble. But the kill again, Stracer. Malfurion is still down. Here comes the Salvo from Phoenix, and it nets them another kill. Uh, quickly done against Sylvanas, and that's two down now already. Nicely done here. But still a bit of a weird move by the one to simply let that altar go. I don't necessarily think that there was a reason for that to happen. The exchange and kills that we're seeing here. So far so good. But now obviously a chance for the team in red to reclaim their bell tower at the bot lane. And that's exactly where they're headed right now. So they're going to try and make that a thing. And with those, yep, the pumpkins, boom, boom, boom. And that's going to be the bell tower back. All right. Yeah, the little fight here, the only highlight that we had so far. Uh, there's the move, Pumpkins, highly prioritized. But definitely keep your eye there on Magi. I mean, he nearly got out, and then we just saw Malthael come through. And that's obviously a stack for him as well on the last rides here, so that's already just working with a cooler reduction. And then the final hit then from Taranda against the second target with the damage over time, delivering the final blow here. But still pretty even. I mean, it's honestly beautiful to see the top teams in this group stage being so close. It's a little bit sad that Bolo, the Swedish team, isn't one of them. But outside of that, I gotta say that the battle between those teams is really interesting. And keep in mind, the next phase of the tournament is going to be a step ladder system bracket, like a gauntlet system. So that means that the higher up in the standings you are, once that the group stage is done, the less games you have to play in order to crown yourself the champion of this entire thing. So, the, really, every single map here matters significantly. The exchange of bell towers, four shots against four fired. Misaka in trouble is trying to get out, and we're still seeing Toranda. Actually, Tracer dance here with good. In comes the move against Toranda. A body block, and that's the end. Toranda down. You can salvo all day long. But that's not going to kill anybody. Last rights, on the other hand, will. And that's the second kill now for Malthale with his ult. So that's 10 seconds of cooldown reduction. Quest completed for Nuburak. He has those extra 500 hit points. But Malthale died too at the end of that engagement. But he has two stacks together already. So that isn't really too bad. Now we have the one on 22 points on the core. 18 for SPT. Uh, 73 stacks for Sylvanas. All right. Maybe the Haka not completing his level 1 yet. But he's getting there. But yeah, the 73 stacks for Sylph isn't too bad. I mean, again, you also have to consider this is obviously a far cry away from uh, anybody playing Quick Match or Storm League because it's a lot tougher to really stack that properly. But Sylvanas is starting to get some really nice stacks together for the damage. Hey, he lost the soul a second ago, and you can tell because, well, now he is just getting beaten around here the entire time. No chance for him to escape here, and that's another kill in favor of SPT. Was currently sitting on 18, uh, 9 kills against 8, 18 points on their core. And they're pressuring the bot lane again. They already converted the top bell tower, so there is definitely a little bit of momentum for them. But with the Haka pushing that through, they're going to reclaim it. In the meantime, though, we're having the pressure here at the bottom of the map in that numeric advantage that they hold. Top lane gets reconverted on the other hand, as already mentioned before, so the Haka is going to take care of that. So we're looking at 4 versus 4 bell towers again. Bot lane gets pushed, one pumpkin camp through, double altar on the map now in a few seconds. And with that, we're going to have the attempt for a kill. We actually see that already with Riptide. That's a great hit against yep, Sylvanas. Mel DC actually gets out here. Nicely done, Sylvanas falls. But that's a great kill. If they can now also keep Big Bros alive. And yes, Malthael actually survives through all of that. Salvo comes in. Nobody throwing out any panic ults either. So now we have a potential double altar in favor of SBT. And that will take them towards the lead again. And yeah, they're getting them. That's eight shots right off the bat right there. It's 14 against 18. It's going to be a close one. This is seriously going to be a bit of a closer match here from what it looks like. And I am absolutely on board with that. 
Rotation topside, and they actually go for boss as well. Sylph is down for another 10 seconds, and they are just saying YOLO. 10 seconds, that's more than enough. Obviously, by now, we're having the one sniffing out that something's happening here, but Anubarak is anchoring the play. And with Sylvanas just now respawning, there's no way for them to fight this. So boss gets taken. Another four shots, and SPT has significantly put themselves into the lead now. That's going to be 10 that's actually less... Uh, no, 10 versus 18. Alright. And also, uh, we're having at the same time both of them on nearly the same amount of experience. That doesn't do bad. So they're gonna hit level 20 around the same time. We won't see a massive lead in Storm Talons. For an extended period of time, at least. I'm also a bit curious to see how far Malthael can go here. Two stacks right now isn't really bad or anything but obviously you want to have a little bit more to get the cooldown of your last ride so low that eventually you can use it multiple times within a single fight uh, that would be the absolute dream for him and we're nowhere near that just yet but then again it's also a question of how much does Sylvanas get out of this the cocoon is out again they engage into the back line happens immediately there's the reptile no place right now and the lightning breath together with a tongue connect from good Nicely done, and another kill, and obviously Sylvanas also requiring a few more stacks out of this. And again, Junkrat with a really nice setup, and they get the kill against Tracer, and they make another triple happen. Malthale, Tracer, Toronto, they all fall. Nicely done. Junkrat, seriously, just delivering the entire time. Frankl had some fantastic moves here already. A couple of kills earlier in the game that were absolutely impactful. But right now he's just creating opportunities the entire game through his displacement abilities. And this is fantastic for them. They were just falling behind and now Frankel's plays and the team following them up actually sets them ahead here. At least when it comes to experience and also kills. So they can use that momentum to claim a few more bell towers. And you look at the bottom, they already took that. They take the one in the middle now too. And with only Phoenix around, there's absolutely nothing they can do about this. Magi with the channel, Dibbles as well, just sitting there. And that is already another... There should be 12 on the board right there. Yep, they're getting the hits in. Four against 10 points. This game changed quickly. Very, very quickly at that. Ah, in comes a potential hit again. Misaka gets pushed in. And there's two more shots fired. Three, actually. They're down to one. SBT. They had the lead. And now they are down to a single point on the core. Against the ten on the side of the one. They attempt to reclaim those bell towers. As we're seeing, obviously, also the grab for level 20. They need experience. Bot lane doesn't matter too much right now. With all the pumpkin camps already taken. So you can neglect that for the time being. But here's the 20. And that gives us rewind great and amazing tool in and of itself but of course with that also the big question now is that going to be enough to bring them back here can they win a fight only two stacks still on Malthiel 110 stacks nearly now on the side of Sylvanas so she's starting to hit the damage here for sure and the Haka is already moving through. It's still five Bell Towers against three. I mean, not that the numbers of Bell Towers really matters for the one anymore. Fact of the matter is you get a boss, you get one camp through, or you're able to take another altar, and the game is over, and you win. But, yeah, SPT has no other chance, and try and force a fight. Take it completely, and play around that. If they can do that and build some momentum for themselves, then that would be fantastic. But right now, they have to look for that fight and they have to take it. And, I mean, it is a fight that's easily given since there's a single altar on the map. If anything, the one could just sit there and decide that they give it up because they don't like the position, considering that there's only three bell towers on the other side. That's three points of the core. They can definitely afford to do that if they don't feel it. So, already the engage from Diablo here, stun into the wall, the root on the ground, and there's the lightning breath, and the kill against the Nuburak. He was silenced, couldn't get away, Dibbles is down, but he had the souls up, he's, be he's gonna be back. And we have Tyrande falling, Malfurion and Tracer both die, and this is just not gonna work out here. For SBT, they lose pretty much everybody here, it's a full team wipe as they go down, and this is going to be game number one, ending in favor of the one on Towers of Doom. GG, and well played as we see the blue team victorious.
Alrighty, game number two, everybody. Uh, the one in the lead against SPT. And yeah, it was actually a good game, but the one just gained way too much momentum in the later stage of our Towers of Doom game. Now we're looking at Sky Temple. That's going to be map number two. First pick, first ban goes over to SPT, which means that the one chose the map. Mayev gets banned out first of all. And yeah, let's see what SPT's plan is to come back into that. I, I mean, I gotta admit, they were off to a great start as we we're heading into game number one. But then uh, in the mid game and especially in the later stages, they started to struggle a lot. And that Sylvanas momentum, uh, just grabbing those bell towers, that was a massive, massive issue. So they won. They ban out ETC. Misaka is not gonna get that hero today. And what else are we going to see from SPT themselves right now? If you're talking about a map like Sky Temple, like first of all, globals obviously again become powerful. If you want to play with the Harker, it's a great map for them to play. It's a map where in a European setup you would definitely see Abatha addressed, but that might be one of the things you already picked up on. Abatha isn't really high in priority in China by any means. I mean, rarely do you see a ban against him or you see, do you see him played. We have now Taranda banned out by SPT first of all. And the one could now think about now. Nah, they ban out Zeratul, so we're having in this case no commitment to any of the globals just yet. Now ETC can of course take over that role too if you're going into stage dive and you can really help out with it. But at the same time, the Haka would be the obvious choice if you want to play a global game. Maybe not quite as a first pick here. I mean there's still a lot of other heroes around like Ana who doesn't get banned out. A new Burak that you might want to get early. But the Haka is definitely a big contender for the side lane right now. And this is a map where we could see false set. I mean, we have seen a bunch of false set plays now. There's other heroes with global abilities that you can also rely upon. Don't want to go as crazy as mentioning uh, the one who shall not be named here. But there's the Haka. As we have. All right. And Jaina. So already two of the heroes that were banned in the last game make it into the draft here. A bit of burst damage potential for the one. The global aspects again from the Haka, which can definitely help them. And I just want to know if SPT responds with a global of their own. They are not going to go into Trash Wing because they have Ana already. Uh, then again, I wouldn't classify Bright Wing as a healer because it's just like it doesn't heal. So it's just there. So the value from that hero is more so in the global aspect, so well, nah. Yeah, just memeing here a little bit. I mean, there's, there's, there's a certain reputation that I have to uphold, obviously. No, but all jokes aside, I honestly like would like to see if they are putting out a global in any form. If they are comfortable adding a false set player, for example, if they at least have something that can rotate a little bit quicker. I mean, we had a bunch of heroes in the past that were really filled that hole but now with the Haka taken and uh, the recent weeks I don't really think that SPT is going to go into that false set so they definitely will have to play around the Haka the best they can. Garrosh banned out and we have Malthael also banned out from the one here. So time for our next two picks and there's still a bunch around. I mean they actually go into uh, yep there's the Nubarak pick and they go into Malfurion too. It's a little bit weird to still see all of that on one setup. I mean, you have the Nubarak with the engage, you have the immediate route afterwards. Jaina can drop the damage, could even go ring if she wanted to. Depends a little bit on what else SPT picks here. And we have, next to that, now Liming taken so she can burn the cocoon down. And on top of it, we're also having Blaze. I mean, Blaze at least has a wave clear to match this. It's another defensive tool. And that's the last pick, Sylvanas, as we're heading into game number two. Game number two, the one in the lead in our Sky Temple, or in the series as we're heading into Sky Temple. This time, Anubarak on the other side as we are going straight into our second match where the one has a chance to claim another point for the standings here in the group stage, but SPT obviously trying to bring it back right now. They have the power output, that's for sure. Nano boosted Leeming is always a threat and you have the survivability of heroes like Diablo, Blaze and the Bunker play too. There's a lot to be added to that. Quests, of course, again with the Unfurling Shadows here on level 1 for Sylvanas. We saw that be highly successful in game number 1. And yeah, in the meantime, the rotation here into the mid lane after the initial push for the Vision Tower was successful for the 1. So the map was chosen by them 
and they have the Haka, which now also of course means that they should be able to get slight advantages here. We're actually seeing the Haka at the top now. And things definitely change a little bit with this map. I mean, typically you would expect the Haka to be more so on the bot lane right now, because then during the first altar phase, he can go straight into the middle or top. These days it actually uh, happens that the Haka finds himself at the beginning of the game top side a lot more often and then just tunnels down and tries to get some value with that little move. But especially during the second objective, that's still where the old rule holds true that you want to have the Haka topside before the objective spawns so that he can help out pushing another wave in, get a lead and experience, and then make his move down to the bottom of the map to assist the team in the 5 versus 5 that is surely going to happen over the second objective phase. So again, we're seeing the Siege Giants committed to quite early, even a bit of a bait on the other side here. Yeah, SBT takes theirs also late, so they have an advantage by pushing the lane out. Can go for the defense first here quite easily, since it's a lot closer to their own towers, and then play around that. But yeah, at this point, we're having also the camp address towards the top right. So SBT is playing a lot more around the mercenaries and trying to use the momentum that they offer. They're missing out on some experience top lane. Not too much though, the minion wave as you might have just caught uh, moved into the towers, but Blaze already rode in, uh, in half a second later, so they shouldn't have lost too much there. Maybe a minion, two at the most. But we still have that slightly earlier level four for the one. And now it's all about the push at the top side. The one taking their own bruiser camp now, rotating even Jaina up. And the chain rotation is actually a smart one. I mean, they need a lot of wave clear at this point, and despite the aura that gets provided here with the spell aura, you can still get Sylvanas in shortly after. So, yeah, trying to stop that is definitely what they need to do early on so that the towers don't take too much damage. It's still the same rule that we had on Sky Temple for such a long time. If you are able to damage structures and maybe even take them down without the help of the objective itself, you are eventually going to get a lead in the game. And that's something that just holds true on Sky Temple no matter what. And we're back to the game immediately. So apparently like a bit of a problem. I would assume that it's sound issues. That's usually what causes these little breaks there. But the top lane, as I just said, pushes in now for the one. They already had Sylvanas up there and they rotated uh, Jaina, who by now finds herself again in the middle in a bit of a sorceress battle against Liming here. But the top value already granted with one turret destroyed and the gate nearly dropped as well. So with this, we're having a quite a bit of value actually for the one. And they are already now in a position where they're starting to significantly threaten the top four because they took down some of the top lane structures down with the help of the mercenary camp. And on top of this, they're now getting that temple. So that means that the fort is very likely going to fall. Whereas in the mid lane, the SPT does damage, but I don't think it's going to result in the fort being destroyed. So there's a pretty big difference between the two there. Uh, Nisaka still holding the position there. The Haka is by now at the bottom of the map. And could move now to the top. So basically what they did, they really rotated the Haka then, um, as I explained earlier, down to the bottom of the map. It's actually interesting that some teams don't do that anymore, as I said before, but in this case they still made that play. So he could have always moved up to the top if there was the threat of a fight and turn it into a quick 5 versus 4, but they neglected to do that. The fort, on the other hand, as I pointed out, has fallen, whereas the one in the middle has only taken serious damage, um, but is not actually down. So, yep, so far so good. The Haka now will make the rotation back top, has actually just tunneled in, and that means that they're already preparing for the next objective. So the whole setup here will center around the Haka pushing the lane out as much as he can. And then the next shrine or the next temple is going to appear at the bottom of the map. So then SBT will have to make a choice. Either they deal with the Haka topside or they force the fight at the bottom, force him to tunnel in. But depending on how it goes, the one could, for example, opt in to simply say, you know what, we're going to give you the temple, but we're going to get damage against your keep at the top lane. I mean, we're obviously jumping a little bit ahead with this, but this is kind of the plan. But this down here, that's another big problem, actually, now that we're having it on screen, because this is amazing for the one. As I said before, the more structures you actually take down, is the, the better your position is on the map here. And this is exactly what they're currently doing. They're bringing through the entire wall, they're taking the fountain down, that's also very beneficial for them for the next objective since it spawns bot side and if only one of the teams has the fountain in the mid lane or in the, sorry, in the bot lane still up, 
that means that you can tap the fountain and pre-tap go into the fight. I mean, it's a fantastic position for the one, seriously. I mean, you can't understate this. It might not look like much with that little lead that they have here, but if you're playing on the map like Sky Temple, this is just absolutely insane what we're seeing right now. You have level 10 versus level 9.5, just as we're seeing the objective spawn at the bottom. You have the fountain taken out, you have the wall destroyed, the top fort is gone, you have the Haka on your side. This is a dream come true. This is all without a single kill. This is without a single kill at this point. There's just nothing. And yeah, with that, we're having an easy, easy attack down here. Hugo is putting a bit of the extra damage in. Less shots needed, therefore. Another fort is down, and obviously those shots from the temple are then targeting the mid lane. It's always the closest. And yeah, with that said, there's 10 on both sides right now, but still the situation for SPT is... I don't want to call it dire yet, but it is con... it's it's a concern. It's a, uh, Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, the fort in the mid lane is now nearly going to fall too. If Frankel dies, and whoo! Nice arrow, baby! Hanzo, right between the eyes. The Haka came down here to help out, and also Malfurion popped his ult, but all of those tools were used too late to really save Jaina. So, yep, that saved the fort in the middle. They should still be able to get this. But it's definitely... A uh, really, really nice setup for them. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit curious now how the rest turns. But again, structural advantage, massive for the one. And there's no map where structural advantages are more important than on uh, Inferno Shrines. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I was talking about Sky Temple, and second of all, there is a map that is not in the pool where it also matters, and that is, of course, Blackheart's Bay. But, yeah. <laughs> yes. To sum it all up, there's no map where structural advantages are more important than any eh, inside wrong map here. Okay. So, either way, we're currently having a single kill for SBT, none for the one right now. But now the opportunity to fight for either top or bottom temple. And again, SBT is far behind. Okay, here's the problem. If you look at the minimap right now and you see all the structures that have been taken down, SBT cannot trade evenly into temples anymore. They can't. If they trade evenly into temples, if for example, with the next phase, they take the top temple and let their opponent take the bottom temple and repeat that game throughout this entire map now, then they will lose eventually because they run out of structures quicker. And once that all of those keeps are down, or at least a few of them, there's a catapult pressure to consider, of course, too. So uh, that's why the one is in a very, very comfortable position where there's no real pressure on them. The pressure is on SPT to make moves. Uh, and SPT actually loses Ana here. Ana goes down, lightning breath and the help of Jaina. Guarantee that kill. The pressure here in the middle that should actually take down that fort. And it does more than that. Hanzo is dead as well. And it looks like we're going to see a triple kill incoming here since Blaze is also eliminated. So with now even more structures taken down, the top camp getting value, a boss being attacked and two temples up on the map. It is absolutely amazing right now. It's actually really, really nice for them. Uh, three kills against one. You're already in the lead, and it's just a bit of a disaster here. I mean, the kill against Anna was absolutely what was needed here, and those slows that are coming from the water elemental and from Jaina herself are, of course, great when the opponent's hero doesn't have any kind of escape tool that they could use to move away from it. So, yeah, situation is great. The one is looking at... Uh, game where they should be able to take that 2-0 in this match which is going to solidify their position within the top four even more they're one and a half levels ahead the boss is already on the bot lane ignored by the way by SPT SPT is completely ignoring the boss the Haka is at the top lane puts the pressure onto the keeps that's one keep gone and they're evenly trading into this with the boss just still doing damage this is a nightmare for them yeah that top keep is it gonna fall Ooh, that it's gonna be close actually that's not gonna fall Sylvanas moves in together with the Haka. That would be a hashtag worth it move, but so far none of that applies. We're having still the fight at the bottom of the map. Last shots have been fired, but Blaze in trouble. Nice arrow. Does that do enough though? The good nearly died here by the way, Mr. Haka, but it looks like we're going to have Blaze fall after all. Blaze is down. And uh, goes out in the blaze of fire. 
been blazing it all game long, but we have still not seen a single fort fall for the one, and they're pushing now through the bot lane. It's four kills against one. Again, there's not a lot of kills or anything in this game. It's more of a strategical map, generally speaking. And now with that Sylvana set up, they're just putting damage onto the structures again. And the top lane, as long as the fight focuses here on the bottom, the top lane is going to be neglected. They didn't stick around for longer, but if they did, those two catapults would have eventually taken down the keep anyways. And as it happens, uh, SPT doesn't really seem to care about their keep. Like, wait, what? And don't tell me they just lose that. And they just lost it. What? SBT just rotated into the middle and told Blaze as he was already heading into the middle as well. Uh, dude, could you please take care of the top wave? There's two, two and a half waves coming in with two catapults. And he's just like, yeah, I'm on it, but he's way too late. So the keep goes down for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, SBT definitely with a bit of a bad moment there. Not quite paying attention to the minimap and not realizing under how much pressure that keep actually was. And that's a free keep now for the one. I mean, free in the sense they would have taken it anyways. It was already incredibly low, obviously, on HP. But still, as long as the keep doesn't fall, those catapults don't spawn on every wave. And that is worth a lot. So they're trying to delay that for as long as you can. And with the camp available, they could have maybe like delayed it even more. But now as it stands, there's continuous top lane pressure. And yeah, the Haka, as you can see here, top lane is where the temple is. So the Haka is on the other side of the map, as he should be. And the Haka is pushing in for another keep with also now catapults plus siege giants. And there's nobody there. There's nobody there. This is the second keep. This is going to be a second keep. And the one is just sitting there saying, like, yeah, of course you can take that temple. Hey, if you don't want to fight here and you don't do anything about the Haka, take that temple all day long. You're breaking our wall. Ooh, you killed the tower. Terrifying. We're going to take your keep in the meantime, by the way, just saying. And then we're going to try and pressure your core a little bit. Let's see how you deal with that. There's already a few interrupts against those portal attempts that we're seeing from SPT. But the core is already taking damage. It's down to 80%. They have 16 finally, but yeah. There's a bunker. The fight is getting forced too. But the core is down to 60. And the shit show continues. Core down to 53%. The rest of the team is on the run now. Cocoon has been used too. But they're not forcing the fight just yet. But two catapults, uh, sorry, two forts down, two, uh, three forts down, two keeps down. Means that you have two lanes now significantly pushing. Sylvanas is already taking care of the top, which is going to attack the keep in the middle. And if they, if they honestly get the entire rest of the temple, and with now Li Ming dying, they should. That means that every single keep is dead. I mean, easily. So yeah, there we have again the one moving out. And as I said, the keep is down. Every single structure is destroyed with the exception of the core. And even the core is at 53%. Like the only thing that you have to do if you're the one right now, you don't have to shit the bed. You, you can't shit the bed right now. If you just play the long game, even if you just don't die, there's a good chance you're just going to win because of the catapult pressure. But they, they go for the aggression. They take down... Anna again at seven kills against one now as Diablo falls two. They get the triple kill against Hanzo. And now it's time for Blaze to join his friends in death. And that is it. There's the isolation against Dibbles. And that's it. The five man team wipe finishes the game as the one takes down SPT with a 2 0 victory.